The engines of the Woodhead line were getting along quite well. They worked day and night as hard as they could. They were trying to make some money for the railway, which meant they were very busy. The summer passed like a leaf blown from a tree and so did autumn. That meant that winter came and with it a lot of work for the engines. The express ran four times a day, there were more heavy goods trains laid down and more mail to deliver. The busiest part of the line was definitely the branch line from Penniston to Watt. Timothy was flat out with coal trains which meant another engine had to take over the passenger trains. Stephen, Nigel and William shared this in between their duties. Unfortunately there was no engine left to take the fully loaded trucks to Sheffield or Manchester and then return the empties. Which meant another engine was needed. Yet again. I'm flat out with my work and now I have to help with the Wath branch line. <sighs> we do need another steam engine. Stop complaining, will ya? Were you the one to carry the empties yesterday? No, I did. How disgraceful. Oh, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. If you weren't listening last night, you too were complaining. Oi, it's John. <laughs> Is it now? Well, anyway, as Stephen was saying, we need another engine. And fast. The coal traffic gets very busy in the winter season. You don't say. Oi, Edwin, your train is ready. Better leave before you're late. Okay, I'll be right there. Remember, you two, we do need another engine, but we cannot afford it. Not at the moment, at least. But the engines didn't know that a man was watching at them from the distance. Can't we now? The next morning the engines awoke with a surprise. There, in front of the shed, was a GWR King Class locomotive. Its number plate re read 613 and its nameplate read King Henry VIII. Hello there, my name is Edwin. Why aren't you inside the shed? It's dirty. A great western engine should never sleep in a dirty shed. It's as dirty as any other shed. No, the sheds back at the Great Western Railway was spotless clean. Well, is that so? Back when I was still owned by the BR, I once went to the Western region, I think, and guess what? It was as dirty as anywhere else. I never said anything about BR back in the day. Silence! The engines watched. Stephen was awake, and he was very angry. The engine stopped at that moment. It was the first time they'd seen Stephen raise his voice. Thank you very much. Now, I'm Stephen, and you're King Henry VIII, am I correct? Uh, please, call me Henry, it's much shorter. Alright, now be quiet until Mr. Salmon comes. The engines did stay quiet, but Mr. Salmon didn't come for a long time. About half an hour later, Mr. Philipson came with Mr. Salmon and Mr. Robinson following. May I have your attention please, may I have your attention please. Now, I've called you here to tell you about this locomotive. Yes, he's King Henry VIII and he belongs to the Swindon Works. If he proves to be a useful engine, he'll join our fleet. Just one thing, who can we afford an engine like this? They are willing to give him to us for free if we want him. Uh, Mr. Salmon, I'm sorry, but I just don't like him. I don't like him either. I would have chosen a manor, not a big box on wheels like this. No, a king is what we need, but not this one. This one's too arrogant. I've made some friends while I worked on the western region. My best friend was a king. King Richard II his name was, and his number was 6021. In 1962 he was sent to Cashmore Scrapyard in Newport, I think. Newport, you say? Hey, if Mr. Philipson agrees, I can stay. Henry's crew then arrived, and they took him to work. He was coupled up to some empty trucks, and he started puffing towards Penniston, where he would meet Nigel. About 30 minutes later, he arrived there, but the problem was, Nigel wasn't there. About 10 minutes later, Nigel came hurrying in with loaded trucks. Sorry I'm late. You don't say? You're an s and engine, of course you're late. All s and engines are late. Always. Oh, what are you then? A king? 
I cannot pull you any time, anywhere, any train. A 7F beating a king? This is getting better by the minute. Come on, Henry. We'll be late if we don't get a move on. Great Western engines can always make up lost time. We arrive early. We've got a limit, remember? We're not allowed to go faster than 75 miles per hour. Yeah, whatever. Henry then coupled up behind the train, and he started to pull it down the hill towards Sheffield. They made good time as they went along, but suddenly, Henry's driver noticed that they were going too fast. Slow down, Henry, we're going too fast! I can't, these trucks are unfitted, which means... We can't stop! Going way too fast. Stop! I can't! Help! Get out of here, quickly. And in few seconds the station was empty. Well, that was until King Henry VIII came through it at speed. As he did so, he could feel himself getting slower and slower. A few yards later, he stopped. How did we stop? Apparently your brakes were jammed before, you useless piece of scrap metal. No, somehow they've unjammed themselves now. I don't know how, but they did. What's this, Henry? Just jam brakes, sir. Jammed brakes, you say? Well, you aren't exactly as reliable as I w would want you to be. Which means... Yes, sir, I understand, sir. I've contacted Cashmode Scrapyard in Newport, and I've found a locomotive that will take your place. Do you understand? Y yes, sir. King Henry VIII was taken back to Swindon, where he was scrapped. The next day, a Class 37 brought King Richard II to the line, all the way from Newport. The new locomotive agreed to try to be more useful than his older brother. The class 37 stayed as he was needed for the snow drifts on the line. All the engine spirits lifted. Well, all except Stevens. But that, for you and me, is another story.